Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Abby with Fitness is Medicine and today I'm going to show you six exercises that you can do in your home with very minimal equipment. All I'm going to use today is a tube and a ball. So like a, a tennis ball or a tiny little ball that you can play catch with. Even a golf ball would work. Um, so one tube or one band and body weight. So that's all we're going to use today. All right, first we're going to start with push-ups. Um, remember to do a a warm up before you start, so go out and um, ride your bike or um, go for a little hike or a walk, and then we'll be ready for a good workout. So, first, we're going to start with push ups, as I said. So, we're going to start with the variations. It's been a little while since I've done these variations, and we're going to start with a countertop push up, move into a push up on a little bit lower surface, and then to the floor. So, you find the one that gives you a little bit of a challenge without pain, and you work towards your challenge. Okay, so we're gonna start with, I gotta raise up my camera, nope. We're gonna start with a push-up, and I'm gonna use this as my countertop, because I don't have my countertop, but a, a kitchen sink works really well. You can kind of wrap your hands around, you know, the edge of that kitchen sink. But put your hands a little wider than shoulder width apart, and then just lower back and forth like this. This is a push-up. You're using all the same muscles as a normal full push-up without the full intensity of it. So the further I move my feet forward, the easier that's going to be. If you have any shoulder pain, put your hands closer together and keep your elbows next to your body. You can kind of play around with where you put your elbows and your shoulders and your hands, but you want to keep your shoulders down away from your ears. They don't want to be up here. Keep them away from those ears. So the further you move your feet back, the more difficult that will be. If you have any shoulder issues, this could be your limiting factor on this, but you can always message me for different ideas. Okay, so then the next level down would be to do it on like a coffee table or an elevated surface of some sort. And this is actually quite difficult, but if you're on an elevated surface versus being on the floor, you take a little bit of that lever out. So we'll go up and down like this you have a coffee table or, you know, even a little bit lower of a counter. Some bathroom counters are actually pretty low, so if you have a lower counter, you can really move those feet back and get a good resistance. Okay, now I'm going to lower down to the floor and show you what it looks like. Still a full push-up, but on your knees. So if you come down to your knees, like this, and you remember you want to keep your shoulders away from your ears, don't hang into your shoulder blades like this. You want to keep those shoulders strong. A straight line from your knees to the top of your head and then lower down right here. Importantly, don't dip your head. A lot of people kind of go like this when they do a push-up, but you want to keep your head in line with the rest of your spine. You want to keep those cervical spine in line. Lowering down just like this. You want to lower your tummy and your chest towards the floor. Okay, now if you're ready for a full push-up, the other thing you can do is start at one that may be a little challenging to you, so start in a full push-up. If you can do one full push-up, and then drop to your knees to finish the rest. If you know what you do for push-ups, you could have been doing them this whole time. Um, and if you're able to do 10 push-ups, great. Challenge yourself and do 15. Challenge yourself and do 20. So I actually did a bunch of push-ups in chest yesterday, so my muscles are a little bit sore. But you go up on your toes, and you're going to lower down and come back up. So you want to keep everything in as straight a line as possible and breathe. Breathe as you push up. Now if you've done three and that is all you can do, that's okay. Just drop to your knees and continue on. All right, good. All of those variations work the same muscles. So they're not, you're not, um, you know, doing anything less by doing a different version. You're just doing the version that works for you, that challenges you. Okay, next we're gonna do a um, lunge, a backward lunge. So importantly, I would want you to do this next to a counter or with a sturdy chair next to you. My chair got moved out of here, but you know, I can use this even. Even just touching just a little bit can really help. But we're going to do a backward lunge. My camera angle's just a little bit off. Okay, so I'm going to stand and then step really far back. The 
the reason I really like backward lunges is it helps keep your knees and hips in alignment. It keeps your body moving in the right direction. So take a big step back and then just drop straight down. So if you'll notice, I've got 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here. My ankles, my knee is right over my ankles. And then I'm going to come back up. So even if you can only go down to here, that's okay. But you want to make sure that knee stays right over your ankle. So if you can come all the way down, great. Keep your torso back. You want to keep it nice and tall. You're just dropping. You take a big step back and you drop down. So remember, do it next to a counter or a chair where you can hang on and maintain that balance. You want the weight in your front foot in your heel. And that's with all lunges. So lunges and squats, if you're doing any of those, make sure that your weight is in your heel. See, my toe actually comes up a little bit. You don't want to be forward here. It puts this sheer force through your, through your knee joint, and you do not want that. Just straight down. We're going to do five on each side. And if you need to, you can always do more. Five on each side tends to be a good starting point for most people. I think I've done more than five, but that's okay. All right, straight down. The other thing I wanted to mention about doing these lunges is when you go back, notice my knee, okay, it's over my ankle, but it's also not caving in this way. And I'm not leaning way forward like this. Everything is in a nice straight line. Okay, next we're gonna lower down to the floor and do some bicycle abs. So all this really means is that you're gonna be switching your feet. I need to move my camera angle here, there we go. Okay, so by starting on your back with your knees bent, back flattened into the floor, that's important to protect that back, put one leg out straight, hands beside your hips. And now we're just gonna switch feet. So one leg is bent, one leg is straight. Now, if this feels pretty easy, pretty doable, then you can um, just put one down. So keep your bent knee up off the ground. Or alternatively, you can put your bent knee on the ground and your straight leg out without touching. And if those all feel good and your back is not hurting, remember you're pressing that into the floor, then we're going to alternate like this. So when you put that straight leg out, if you have any back pain, just touch it down to the floor. That's okay. We want to be able to work those abs without back pain. So just switching those feet. And we're going to do about 10 on each side, which I know we have with all of the variations that I showed you. So find the variation that works for you and gives you a good challenge still in those abdominal muscles because that's the goal is to find the, the part that challenges you without causing pain. Okay, now we're gonna flip over to our hands and knees and we're gonna do hip extension down here like this. So you're gonna put one foot out like this and just raise and lower. And it doesn't have to go very high. I want you to continue to think about keeping a flat back, keeping the, you know, keeping a teacup on your back. So when you come up, it's just kind of a straight line into the rest of your body and then back down. And see if you can do it without touching your toe down to the floor. We're really targeting those glutes and a little bit of hamstring here. If you find that you're going way up here, that's a little bit too much. You're going to start taking going to start substituting with other muscles and here we just really want to target those glutes and we're going to do 10 keeping your head nice and straight no hanging it like this and also alternatively don't look up like this that can be really hard on your neck so you just want to keep keep your head in line with the rest of your spine keep it all in a good alignment keep breathing can, don't touch that foot down to the floor. So you're really, it's a pretty small movement, but this is a really great hip stabilizer. You can really feel it in your glutes after just a few of them. Okay, now we're going to stand up. One way to stretch those out really good is to just sit back in child's pose. And 
you can hold that for as long as you need if they're starting to feel really sore. Okay, next we're going to do a triceps extension, and I've got my band set up over here. And what we're going to do, I've, I've wrapped it around a couple times to make it just a little bit shorter. So we're going to work those muscles in the backs of your arms here. And I want you to stand in a tandem stance. So we'll work on a little bit of balance. It challenges your core a little bit more that way. We're starting right here with our elbows bent, and we're just going to push down straight. So your elbows don't leave your sides. Your shoulders are down away from your ears, and you're just pressing all the way down to your sides. You should feel this right back here in the back of your arm. If you have any shoulder pain, you may need to use a little bit less of a band, or if you step a little closer, that makes it a little easier as well. So you can kind of decide. The other way you could do this is just use one handle and put both hands on it, or you can use a band wrapped around something higher or through a doorway. There's a lot of different ways you can do this, working those triceps. So those triceps got a little workout with those push-ups, and now we're just isolating them these muscles come in really handy when you need to push off of something, like if you need to move in bed and push, or if you need to push off an arm to stand up or something. Um, that pushing motion, that's where these triceps come in to play. Okay, for the last one, we're going to do a balance exercise, and we're going to do a single leg stance. So we're going to stand on one foot and play catch with one ball. So I'm going to stand on one foot. When you stand, on one foot, make sure this hip stays strong and you don't go out to the side like that. That's called a Trendelenburg gait. Like if you see someone that walks and they kind of do that, we don't want that. If you happen to know that you do that, focus on really keeping those hips strong when you take a step and do some of those hip exercises that I've given. Okay, so stand on one leg. Keep that hip nice and strong. And I'd rather have you put your foot out in front of you like this rather than um, looping it behind your leg like that. That makes it a little bit easier, actually. So just take that ball. This is where the challenge comes in. Make sure you're standing next to something, like a counter or a sturdy chair, to grab in case you lose your balance, or of course, just put your foot down. But I don't want you to fall. And now, to switch hands. Just nice and easy, up and down. And then you can just kind of go back and forth. <laughs> it makes it definitely harder. Okay, switch up, switch legs. Whoops. If you've got somebody that you're doing these with, you can play catch with them. Challenge each other by kind of throwing it around. But it's easy to challenge yourself by your, by all by yourself as well. Just going back and forth. Try to catch and stabilize if you can. After those hip extensions that we did on the floor, you may really be feeling it standing in one, on one leg. Back and forth, challenge that balance. If it's too much with the ball, if you find that when you stand on one leg, that's enough of a challenge, don't add the ball. Um, you know, stand next to somewhere where you can let go. If you start by holding onto something, and then you let go, but you're right there. Try to hold off as long as you can. So find what challenges you within that and then really practice it and work on it. Um, another way you can practice single leg stance is when you're, you know, brushing your teeth or brushing your hair or, you know, pulling on your pants if you stand and put one leg on. Those are all good ways to practice that. Okay, go ahead and do these all through again. Remember, find that push-up variation that challenges you um, and doesn't cause pain. Push-ups are hard, so they're going to be challenging. And it's okay. Try one or two on your toes or try one or two on your knees and see how they go. Get stronger. Make your body work. I like push-ups because they really work your whole body. They work your core and your arms and your shoulders and your chest. And that's part of the reason they're so hard. So do some push-ups. Get those backward lunges. Really focus on that form. And... Go through all of them leaf.